family welcome to yet another first of all happy new year and uh welcome to 2023 uh this is our very first uh speakers magazine uh live interview for 2023 uh, if we haven't met yet my name is brian olds president and founder here at black speakers network as always i'm joined with the amazing sierra black atlanta georgia in the building as well as dr pam perry founder and visionary behind speakers magazine Five years running and no signs of slowing down. Detroit, Michigan is here. And then, of course, we have our very first cover um, issue, honoree, uh, expert, celebrity in chief, like whatever you want to call her, Dr. Monique. You are here in the building. Thank you so much. Uh, and guess what? We are excited to talk to you. How are you doing today? Uh, amazing. I could not possibly be better. I'm in the virtual room with some greats, with some icons, with some legends. I'm grateful. I'm excited for this conversation. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. If you're, if you're not familiar with Dr. Monique, she is a certified coach, content creator, speaker, voice talent. As If you haven't figured it out from that amazing microphone uh, setup she has, she she knows what she's doing. And so super excited to uh, jump in. Uh, Dr. Pam, how are you? I know uh, 2023. I am, I am doing it. great. I am doing great. This, this issue, you know, I'm trying to match with the green here. You see that, right? <laughs> I love it. She has got me so excited. Her, she, we have not met personally, but I have been following her for years and she is amazing. Her book changed my life. I mean, it's just, oh. this is a great way to jumpstart the year talking about money, abundance and overflow. This is, this is it. The, uh, the 2003, the year of clarity and overflow. There we go. Clarity and overflow. Those are the two words overflow yeah. now right.com mm -hmm. overflownow.com i'm so excited she's got a, an amazing story amazing story <laughs> so shy about it too because normally she's interviewing other people well that was her career for a couple of decades yeah. so for her to be interviewed i know she's probably like oh lord he's sweating right well, well she this can't be a... like turning them turning the heat on other no. people Hey, Brian, what you going to learn about me? If Pam knows this. Sierra may know this. We may have talked about it during the interview, but I am an introvert. I got this extroverted, like, outward persona, this career, and I am an introvert. And so to be, to have three people, like, Samonique, tell me a little, it's like a little bit different for me. <laughs> But well, you, you met your you met your Kendrick spirit because I uh, if you go to my LinkedIn, I literally have certified introvert in my uh, in my intro. So see here too. So too. right. So we're, we're all three of us are introverts with yes. with wow. extroverted personalities when mandated. And yeah. I'm a full blown extrovert. Right. I'm pushing all y'all out. Like this is a publicist. And, right. and every time Monico, she says, "Oh my God, I see so many pictures of myself." Oh Lord, have mercy! Oh, it's, it's like a lot. It's, it's a lot for real. Big post board to you. It's like okay, <laughs> but you would never know. I have had the pleasure of meeting um, Monique and being in the room with her. Never knew she was introvert at all, and. Um, I am excited about what she's doing. She's new here in Atlanta and I cannot wait to attend her events, her functions. I cannot stress how important what she talks about systemics is to the community here in Atlanta, the black community and just us as business women, you know, I already I'm bringing me plus five, you know, so, you know, we are ready for you here in Atlanta. Welcome to Atlanta, by the way. Welcome to Atlanta. Can you, can you speak on that a little bit? Because why is everybody moving to Atlanta? Like first Tyler Perry now, you know, Dr. Monique, <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like is Atlanta really the the spot is was that a, a decision based on just wanting to be around uh, other creators or other entrepreneurs or what, what brought you to the region? Mm, it's a great question. So I'm originally from Chicago. Uh, we left Chicago in 2013 and moved to Puerto Rico, the beautiful island of Puerto Rico, which we're, where we lived for almost 10 years. And so when it was time to come back after my son graduated from high school in Puerto Rico and after the pandemic and after, you know, all of these revelations that I think we all had during those two years and we were, you know, quarantined to our homes, um, we had a lot of time to think about things. And once my son graduated, I really felt like I wanted to be closer to my family but didn't necessarily want to go back to Chicago. I wanted to enjoy 
more than two seasons. Pam, you from Detroit, so you know in, in the Midwest, we got winter and summer, and that's it. That's it. <laughs> so we wanted to um, enjoy a new scenery. We have a lot of family based here in Atlanta. And so we said, well, let's give it a try. Let's just try it. You know, and if we don't like it, we'll move someplace else. So I think we're my husband and I are kind of adventurers at heart. We'll, we're willing to try new things. And so far, we've been here a little bit over a year. I feel like we're in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. I feel like Atlanta is so rich with possibility and opportunity. Mm -hmm. I feel like so far, this place is popping, Sierra. Like, I love Atlanta. <laughs> And just really looking forward to really firmly get my feet planted here and meet some more people and do some really fun, amazing and inspiring things here. So, yeah, I'm excited to be here. No That's doubt good. you will find a, a true, uh, rich, robust network of other professionals such as yourself that are um, like minded, but and also very supportive of what you're doing. And I think you will find that here in Atlanta once you really start connecting. And I'm sure Pam is already making those connections because she has several clients, several you know speakers here in Atlanta that she connects with. So I, I think, you know, as I mentioned before, you are in the right place and we definitely need you here. I love this topic. Yeah, Thank you so much. I, but I know Puerto Rico, um, I visited Puerto Rico. Um, uh, not last year, but the year before. And it was really hard to leave. Like, I love San Juan. Like, it is an incredible place. So that must have been a, a, a incredible transition as well. So yeah. when you, you're, you're leading the, the path when it comes. And that's that's kind of part of the, um, the thing. I know you talk about, like, in an article, like, um, kind of leaving corporate, you know, a few decades ago. And now it's kind of like you have that freedom and flexibility to basically – I mean, you could pretty much live anywhere you want, I imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, living in Puerto Rico was a game changer coming from Chicago. I mean, that's Chicago is like you grind, you hustle. Chicago is the capital of the grind and hustle, if you ask me. And so going to Puerto Rico was a huge shift. In fact, Puerto Rico is where the Overflow brand was born. I was in Puerto Rico. I haven't told this story in a while. I was in Puerto Rico, had just gotten there, went there with my hustle mentality, right? And did, was finding that that whole mentality does not work in Puerto Rico. Baby, let me tell you something about Puerto Ricans. Puerto Ricans will sit down at lunchtime, right? And they will have a glass of red wine. They will luxuriate for two and a half hours. And I'm like, okay, it's been 30 minutes. It's time to get back to work. What are y'all doing? Everybody's sitting around. And so I very quickly learned that I had to slow it down. I had to mellow out. I had to take my time with it. I was forcing it so much in Puerto Rico that I had worked myself sick. And so what I had done, Brian, is I took some time. I said, okay, let me just hit the reset button. And so I took the time, took some days off, which I never did in Chicago, <laughs> Sierra. I took some days off and I went and sat out on the beach. I was literally living walking distance from the beach. And I just sat there for days. I said, God, I'm, I'm just going to sit here and, and I'm going to wait until I hear from you. And I sat there for days. First few days, I heard nothing but the waves, which, is, which was good. <laughs> but after a couple of days, I finally began to hear that still small voice. And I began to hear overflow. I began to... to, to to hear this is what I want you to show them as I would look out into the vastness of the ocean. Mm. I was saying, I want you to show them this. And Pam, it was at that point where I was like, oh, and all the things started to line up. And, and that's when I started to host retreats in Puerto Rico. And women would come from all over the world to Puerto Rico to learn, to sit, to just mm -hmm. to, to bask in the beauty of, of what that island has to offer, the energy. And that is when everything for me changed. Mm. I want to say something that is wonderful. That is so beautiful. I remember when I went to Puerto Rico and I was looking you up, I was like, I want to see you. But there was something when you birth overflow. And I want you to say, you didn't mention it in the, um, in the article, but when I don't know if it was Irma or Maria, mm -hmm. which hurricane was that where you were really, you were in the overflow and you did so much for, other people in the island. And I remember um, 
you just giving out. So explain that whole situation. Which one was it, Irma or was it Maria? It was, it was really both of them, Pam, because Irma hit two weeks before Maria. So what happened was we were, um, we had uh, saw the impact that Irma had on the Southern Caribbean, like St. Thomas, Tortola and all those places. And we have friends there because we had a yacht when we lived in Puerto Rico and we would travel to those areas frequently. So we met a lot of amazing people. And so when Irma hit, we saw the devastation and we was like, oh my goodness, let us get as much provision as we can over to our friends in Tortola. We were gonna load it all up on our boat and just take it all down there. And I had literally cleaned out my closet and I said, they lost everything, you know? Yeah. So I said, let me get my shoes, my clothes, whatever I'm not wearing, You're I overflow. am going to pack it up and send it there. Your overflow. So, yeah, the, all the overflow, right? <laughs> yes. And so I, um, we had packed everything up. Our entire community came together to help the people in St. Thomas and Tortola. And so as we as we were getting everything ready, we were ordering military meals ready to eat. Well, cases and cases of water were coming in. My husband just said, let's just go on Amazon and just get as much as we can and take it down there. Lo and behold, two weeks after Irma hit, Hurricane Maria hit the island of Puerto Rico. And mm -hmm. when I tell you it devastated mm -hmm. Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. it was the most frightening, horrifying, beautiful, life-changing, devastating moment all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so when Maria hit, it was like, oh my goodness. First of all, the hurricane itself was scary. It lasted mm -hmm. for over 12 hours. And, and me being from Chicago, we had dealt with tropical storms in Puerto Rico, but never a hurricane of that magnitude. Right. And so once you get past the initial devastation of the hurricane itself, now you're looking at the devastation of the island and mm -hmm. we lived in a really beautiful resort community but just outside of our community were these rural mountainous neighborhoods where they were they had mm -hmm. nothing they were very poor they did not have weeks and weeks of provisions stacked up you know like we did because we were about to take all that stuff to tortola and and so my husband was like well we still need to try to get this stuff to the people in tortola but I had gone up to, to speak to a really sweet lady named Margarita, who I had just worked with for a book bag drive for the kids in the community. And I went to check on her and I was like, Miss Margarita, uh, I just wanted to check on you to make sure you're OK. She was like, Monique, I'm OK, but the people in my community are not. They're wow. desperate. They don't have anything. So all that stuff that we had gotten for Tortola, uh, we wound up going house to house, block mm -hmm. to block, neighborhood to neighborhood. Yeah. To I help remember. those people. You remember that, Pam? Yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 and because we didn't have any power, we didn't mm -hmm. have any cell phone service, mm -hmm. we didn't have any internet, I couldn't do business, I couldn't do work because my business was internet based. And so with no power, no lights, no water, no internet, no cell no phone. Facebook. No Facebook, <laughs> you know, I had to, you know, drive 30 minutes just to try to get a little bit of a signal just to update people to let them know that we're OK, we're mm -hmm. safe, right. we're going to be helping people. So whatever you can send, here's my address, send it to me and I'll make sure it gets out. So we spent uh, I spent 14 months serving my community going house to house neighborhood to neighborhood literally by fit but at first it was just me and my good girlfriend my husband and my son and then i got my church involved and so the whole church got involved so mm. 14 months pam dr brian that we is. were on the ground serving that's the purpose I, of overflow that is the it. purpose of overflow for 14 that's months it. you are actually being a blessing to other people who have nothing that, that's, that's why I want you to tell that story because I remember I that I was you. checking on you and I couldn't because you had no internet and stuff. And I was like, oh my God. But when you finally did arise yes. and tell us what was going on, I was like, I, I said, that's why you were yes. there in Puerto Rico. Now, what it, I think is really interesting about this is that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Monique, but uh, Tortola and uh, St. Thomas are actually part of the U.S. Uh, or the British Virgin Islands, I think. And so it's actually you were technically going to another country to deliver like these foods because Puerto Rico is considered part of the U.S. Yeah. And so, you know, even though geographically it's like right across the water, it's like yeah. you were, you know, extending 
because it, it'd be easy to be like, oh, well, you know, that's another country, but you're right there um, supporting people who are actually your neighbors, even though it's like not part of right. the U.S. Yeah. So, so Tortola is definitely a, a BVI, British Virgin Island. St. Thomas is a U.S. VI. You, so, okay, got it. Yeah. And, and, and a, you know, it's, it's literally in a boat an hour. We could see the island of St. Thomas from Puerto Rico. So they're our neighbors and it just made sense for us to help. We couldn't get there, unfortunately, but we definitely were able to make an impact on the people um, to the to the south of us, as far south as Ponce, Maunabo, all the way up past San Juan, north of us, um, because the entire island of Puerto Rico was devastated. And it was mm -hmm. just an honor and a blessing for us to be a part of the rescue and the recovery. Mm -hmm. That that was a moment in time. Sierra, that changed my life. You know, I thought I was a giver. I thought I was a servant, you know, but day to day going to people's home, literally having to sludge through mud and debris mm. uh, to make sure that people just had basics, bread and rice and some beans and that their babies mm. had diapers. Life changing and, and as difficult as that time, that moment in time was for all of us. I'm so grateful that I had that experience. It changed mm. my life. Let me ask you this because that, that is a fantastic story and kudos to you. And you know what, that mm -hmm. is, from what I recall, that is who you are, very giving. With that, clearly you have a huge sense of community. How difficult was it for you to make that move, leaving those families and, and the community you had grown to mm -hmm. love and make family? How difficult was it for you to leave that? Because clearly community is huge to you. Um, yeah. You know, as you asked me that question, I feel myself getting a little bit emotional um, because it was very difficult. It, I, I cried like a baby. Do you hear me? Like when it was time to go, you know how you're busy packing and moving and taking care of all the logistics and everything. So that kept me busy for those weeks leading up to the move. But baby, when <laughs> it got down to the last 48 hours and I, I'm, you know, I'm trying to spend as much quality time with my friends and and my church members and my neighbors and Miss Margarita. And it was just like, I cried like a baby. I'm sure. And my friend Tonya, who uh, is also from Chicago, her and her husband moved to Puerto Rico literally two weeks before the Hurricane Maria. So we got to wow. know them because we were helping them get water and provisions and stuff. And she came to my house and she just held me. I'm crying right now. I can't believe this. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I like a baby. And it was difficult to leave Puerto Rico. I'm like, mm -hmm. because I looked at at the the, the assets. Right. Like the assets. I'm talking about the people that I got to know, yes. the people mm -hmm. that I got to help. I, I'm looking at the beautiful home that we had. It was literally paradise. Pam, I'm so disappointed that you couldn't come down to our mm -hmm. house that day. Um but I mean, we had this beautiful house with this beautiful garden in the back. It's just a sanctuary. And I'm like, yes. I know Atlanta is cool, but I ain't gonna find <laughs> nothing like this in Atlanta. <laughs> this, this is the side of myself. And, and it turns out, here's what's so funny about your question, Sierra. It turns out, even though I was really sad to leave, when we got to Atlanta, I remember the day that we were driving up because what happened was, funny story, we... When we moved, what we did, I'll just give you the route that we took. We got on the plane, obviously, to come to Chicago, right? Because we were taking my son to school. So we had to come to Chicago, see the family, let him get all his hugs and all of that stuff in before he went up to Boston. We had a van in Chicago. So we took our van, drove him to Boston, okay? Got him settled in and made sure he was good. The baby, poor baby, was leaving this bubble in Puerto Rico to go live in the urban wow. Boston area is, is a big, huge change for him too. So we got him situated, hung out with him for a couple of weeks. Then we drove back to Chicago just to get our hugs in again. And then we drove from Chicago to Atlanta. It was so funny because when we're driving, we're coming into our neighborhood. We're following the GPS. We don't know nothing about nothing, right? <laughs> And we're just like, oh my goodness, look at the trees. Oh my goodness, look at the street. Oh, everything was just, we were just discovering our route home as we're following the GPS to this house that we've never seen. That wow. you know, our family members kind of helped us pick it out. They FaceTimed, they was like, okay, oh here's the master God. bedroom. We literally were doing everything through FaceTime and with this beautiful, wonderful broker that we 
uh, we're working with. And so we're driving up and then we get to the block and the GPS is like, you are three minutes away. So now we're pulling up and we're like, oh my goodness, what is it going to look like? And we pull in, my sister-in-law and her best friend met us here. They were here when we got here. And when we got out of the van, we looking around the house, we're like, oh, this is nice. My sister, she's there with open arms, you know. And when I walk into the house, Dr. Brian, and I'm looking around the house and I look out in the backyard and I see all these beautiful green trees and this beautiful yard and this beautiful neighborhood. And I'm like, just a f few weeks ago, I was crying in Puerto Rico because I'm like, I'm never going to find anything like this. And we arrive here and God is like, I told you I got your back, girl. Look at this beautiful house. Look at this beautiful house. And, and, and we're just renting right now. But with this, it's just, it just felt like home when we got yeah. here, Sierra. And I was just like, God is amazing. If and that's a trust factor do, right there to have oh, your baby. family to help you and you pick out a place to live. That's a real trust factor. I don't have that but, kind of trust. How, how could it not be what you needed or wanted after all that you've given? You know, let's let's just put you know some other elements into it. When you are that giving, your blessings are there too. And the fact that, you know, Dr. Pam mentioned the trust factor, you you know, you were not overwhelmed with it. You were going on faith. So mm -hmm. how could you not get all that in return? And you, you know, those, that was a life changing, I'm sure experience when you helped with the hurricane, but it was also a defining moment because like you said, you thought you were giving, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But here now the abundance and overflow giving even more, which just matches perfectly, not over your brand, but your personality and who you are as a person. Congratulations to you. Congratulations wow. to you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I don't think I've told the story in this format before. And so to hear you project that back to me, it just brings a whole different level of clarity about that moment in time and the impact mm -hmm. and the meaning of it. Mm -hmm. And to, to bring it to this moment, Dr. Pam, it's just like, okay, Sierra, see, that's why you do what you do. You <laughs> well, well, you that. know, yeah, I mean, Sierra could interview like the best of, I was um watching all these like uh, TikToks around um the passing of Barbara Walters and the, mm. uh, like the legacy of like, uh, female journalism in particular and the growth over the last like uh, yeah. 70 or 80 years. I was yeah. like, you know, you, you can be in that line here because she'll get the question, she'll get the she'll get the story out of you. Pam too. Like <laughs> they get like the real story. But Dr. Monique, I am so um excited that you're here. I think um in general, um a lot of the tenants that you're talking about is very on time for 2023. Um mm -hmm. when you talk about like overflow and the mentality behind that as well as um just not being afraid to like bet on yourself and not having mm -hmm. to um I, I think one of the things that entrepreneurs speakers coaches creatives like people from this entire landscape has to get really comfortable with in this particular time of just operating in this like kind of chaotic environment is you know being able to make decisions without having a hundred percent of the information <laughs> kind of like we got some of the information we know directionally where we need to go and then we make a decision and then move forward and so i think that's um this this is really really good yeah so um what about the inner millionaire the book i i want to go get it but i left it on the table i care i've been carrying it around <laughs> um reading pieces of it to my daughter uh but that that was like the catalyst yeah. for overflow now yeah so the and so <sighs> First, I, I just got to go back to what Dr. Brian said for one second, because it resonated with me. And when you said you got to be willing to bet on yourself, like that's a whole sermon right there. Right. That's like a whole teaching, B being willing to bet on yourself as speakers and content creators. I don't want us to gloss over that because that's what really is, is all about, especially now, because as y'all know, there's a lot of people out there putting the label coach and speaker behind their name. And, mm -hmm. and, and there's some people who are doing it who don't really leverage the, the, the information and the resources that you provide, Dr. Brian, or that you provide, Dr. Pam. Like, you know, you, you can't just call yourself a coach and a speaker out here without really understanding the weight of that. 
like that comes with a big responsibility. And, and so, so being willing to bet on yourself, I think is key because if you are willing to take on that responsibility, then that means that you really feel like you have something to say and you bring something to the table and you really want to make an impact and being willing to bet on yourself. And that means that if, if people don't choose you, you got to be willing to choose yourself. If the doors mm -hmm. don't open up for you, you got to be able to be willing to cut out your own doorway. You know, I did that so much in my career. I couldn't wait for people to invite me to the table. I had to build my own. And so I want people to understand the weight of using uh, those titles, uh, speaker and coach. It comes with a huge responsibility. So you want to make sure you're connected to the right people who can train you, teach you, mentor you in those spaces. Because if you're impacting others, you want to make sure you're doing it right. And then also being willing to bet on yourself, choose yourself and don't wait for somebody to choose you. So I just want to say that to that. But to answer your question, that's my long answer. Sorry about that. I'm a little bit long winded when you get I, me to talking. <laughs> I just want to, I, Monet, if you could tag that, because I, I think we want to uh, pull that as a soundbite and put it somewhere. I don't know what we're going to do with that particular piece, Dr. Monet, but that was, uh, excuse yeah. me, Dr. Monique, but Monet's mm -hmm. in the background. Uh, that was incredible. But yes. yes. Uh, but yeah, feel free to if we go to Pam. And then I think we're going to uh, Speakers Magazine. Um, we're going to walk through this issue, but I, I want to make sure yeah. we get Pam's question in as well. Yeah. This is all yeah. good stuff. Yeah, well, for the sure. Thing that the, the inner um, millionaire, her book um, really talks about her money story. Yes. And um, she has a framework that she helps women with money. Uh, she does it on the podcast. She does it in overflow. She does it in coaching. And she certifies other coaches as well, um, training. Um, but the money story had to do with, um, and we had a conversation the other day with a high finance person too. So, but it really talks about how she got into the overflow once she realized uh, about um, her mm -hmm. money story, which mm -hmm. came from that book. Yeah, well, so I wrote, uh, go ahead, Brian. Well, I just, it, I was pulling from an article because it has this beautiful breakdown that you did, Sierra, where it's like um, how to embrace your inner millionaire uh, and it, the four pillars that you go into. And it's, so it's like the four types of people um, that uh, money flows to. And so it mm -hmm. says people who understand it, people who respect it, people who are not afraid of it, and people who are generous with it. And I thought that was incredible. Um, <laughs> Listen, this, this this book is so rich. I, I have it right here, Pam. Just so okay, good. Hey. <laughs> so, I love that little money ball that you're holding. That little uh yeah, that, that money ball is legendary. That's a whole other story. <laughs> but the book, you know, the inner millionaire is key because there's so many reasons, but it's key because what I want us to understand, see air, is that. You know, you hear me talk about money. I'm a money mindset coach. Money is important. But is money really the only thing? Yeah. Like, if we really want to experience joy on a deep level, abundance, if we really want to understand wealth, it goes way beyond money. And so as I did the discovery and the research and my own hard knocks of, of, of reframing my money story and rewriting it, I discovered, and through many conversations with women of wealth at all levels, I discovered that money is cool, but money is an inside game first. Like <laughs> the money that you have on the outside, if you're not feeling good and grateful and wealthy and abundant within, that money will come and go and it'll break you if you don't have it. And so the inner millionaire is the understanding that there is no shortage of money in the world. We can have access to as much of it as we want. We can create as much as we want, desire, or need, but it starts in your mindset first, Pam. We got to get our mind together. And one of the ways that you can get your mindset right and unleash the overflow is by understanding those four things that you pointed out, Dr. Brian, and that is money flows freely to four, those four types of people, people who understand it, people who are not afraid of it, people who respect it, and people who are generous with it. So I break those concepts down in the book. I also give you eight simple steps to tap into your abundance. And they're so simple and practical. It's like, you know, it's basic stuff. And I think once we all get a hold of that, then, then we'll easily unleash our overflow. And just to be able to talk about it. 
in, in the way you do, you make people, money is such an emotional issue. But yes. the way you bring it up and Sisternomics on the podcast, it's like we're talking about it. everybody's bringing their money story to the table. They're looking at it. They're not afraid of it. They're not ashamed of it. Right. So I was, I'm like loving this. And and your pivot from being uh, a media personality to radio and TV personality and then doing your own business and all of that to where you are now. I always say God doesn't waste anything. Right. Because yeah. it's all those skills that you had early in your career in journalism doing what you're doing now because you're a content creator and still a voiceover talent. Absolutely. So, you know, that's, that's part of it as well. So I just love what you're doing and you. the, um, the overflow coach certification program kind of tell us a little bit about what that is. Mm, I'm so excited. So I started cause training overflow coaches back in 2015, 2016, the, uh, and it was great. I have currently seven overflow coaches, hurricane Maria and all of the challenges of life that followed that kind of interrupted the, the continuous flow of training more coaches, but I'm excited to be getting back to training coaches. And there's a new cohort of overflow coaches starting this year in February. And, and so people who really have a heart to help, people who know that they want to serve others and, and mentor and coach, and maybe you've already been doing it, but you just don't have the certification behind you, then I'm excited because we're going to be welcoming a new cohort where we will be training you how to coach and doing it the right way and all of the techniques and the nuances of coaching and coaching people effectively. And I'll be giving you the overflow and inner millionaire framework that you can use to build a coaching business or add on to your current coaching services. And you'll just have that certification behind you as validity and credibility that you are a, a, a knowledgeable um, uh, and spiritually aware coach that mm -hmm. truly has the, the skills and the tools to help people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That part right there. That part, the spiritually aware. That part, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You remind me. I was listening to Michael Beckwith this morning. You remind me of him. That maybe that's yeah. that that part. It's something oh. about that same spirit. And um, I've just been on a Michael Beckwith binge the last couple of weeks or so. So that part right there reminds me because he talks about it being an inside game. You know yes. how you got to have that first. So yeah, I love, yes. I love that. I love that. Thank you. And I gotta, I just gotta take a moment and just give you your props, Pam, because like you said before, we've been knowing each other in this virtual world for over 15 years, yeah. literally. If you, if you go all the way back to when Twitter mm. started, me and Pam came on Twitter. We, we were probably on MySpace together, girl. What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I just have to just take a moment for you because you are amazing. First of all, you're a light in the world. Yes. You have this bright, beautiful personality, and it shines through every reel, every little dance and video that I be seeing you do, girl. You just, <laughs> Pam is fearless in shining her light. So I just need to thank you for your vision, for your fearlessness and boldness, for just allowing the ideas that God has given you to come up and out, for being so enthusiastic about getting other people seen and known. Mm -hmm. Since you are a legend out here, and I, I it's not... It's not long for me that you just are, you've been doing your thing for a minute and I thank you and I'm grateful to be connected to you. Oh, thank you. That means a lot coming from you because we've known each other for a long, through all the different transitions of the different careers and things like yes. that. Yes, and we have. been up with technology. Hey, yeah. I'm on that TikTok game. Let me tell you, I, I'm not going to be left behind. <laughs> I need to learn that from you. I do. <laughs> Yeah, Pam. Pam is um, she she stays on the cutting edge of uh, competency when it comes to like adapting. Yes. But you you kind of have to. So I I think um, mm -hmm. I but I'm I'm a big fan of giving people their flowers while they're here. So I'm glad that you um, you were we all agree. Moment. Amen yeah, to absolutely. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let let's dive into Speakers Magazine because I know we have this beautiful cover and so many um articles and um. And uh, of course, we have our cover story with you, Dr. Monique. So um, now I know we have this. Uh, looks like we have like a video embedded in there too, mm -hmm. right, um, mm -hmm. Dr. Pam? And so, who, whose video is that? That uh, video, I want to say, Dr. Monique, you had about eight thousand views on that video. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> and I was like, okay, Whoa. so that's how God uses all of her stuff together, right? It was top notch. Your whole channel is good. 
Oh, thanks. But this one just kind of like talks about the money, you know, just yeah. the overflow, the meaning of it and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. So yeah, mm -hmm. your whole channel. When you go to that one, you'll go to her whole channel. Um, and she's pumping out content all the time that is really, really good. Not junk, really, really good. She's, a, she's a perfectionist when it comes to that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, this Thank is, you. That so microphone cool. she got over there, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a this is a great cover and a great picture too, by the way. I think um, I, I saw your headshots and the rest of the um, or some of your photos and the rest of the the magazine. But yeah, this is this is cool. And so I know I always look forward. I always um, you know, sometimes Pam sends with a little heads up, but I like to see it, you know, just when everybody else is seeing it too, just to kind of see uh, if I know who's going to be on the cover, like what it ends up looking like. And uh, this is this is a great way to kind of kick off 2023. So. Oh, man. I'm so honored. Monet, Monet we can uh, go into the issue. I know um, we got a ton of stuff. This is um, I, I, I really appreciate the fact that this is uh, online again for everybody mm -hmm. watching right now. Um, Speakers Magazine, um, official uh, magazine of Black Speakers Network. It is uh, available at uh, online. This is what we're literally looking at right here, speakersmagazine.com. Uh, click on online issue and you will be able to uh, view what we're viewing. Uh, and then, of course, uh, there are physical copies available uh, to the select few that uh, yeah. <laughs> can get their hands on on site. But this is great, Pam. I had someone tell me that they downloaded their copy and they printed it, um, like took it to a printer to print. I'm like, really? I said, should I put copyrights on this thing? I'm like, it's for you to download to read, not for you to download and print. I'm like, Lord have mercy. I said, but that's yeah. at their expense. Like, I don't think, I mean, I can't imagine more than six I, people doing that per per. <laughs> Right, yeah. just just order the magazine. Just subscribe, yeah. right? <laughs> well, I don't think some people may not know that you can order it, so maybe talk yeah. about that a little bit. That's true. Yeah, they can, they can get a subscription mail to the house, so that that's one of the main things they can do. That uh, I'm really excited. This issue um, kicking off 2023, our quick media coverage program, and what this is is giving people guaranteed PR. And so it is something I talked with Dr. Monique about this last week about some of the pivots that I was doing. I said my PR pivot was to do this. And mm -hmm. really, because I've been doing this for so long, I kind of know what people want and they they don't want to, quote unquote, um, learn it. They just want it. And so the quick media <laughs> coverage, I give them a list of about maybe 50 media outlets that they can choose from that they can pick and get. That's really it. It's like a menu. And I'm really excited about it. The little video kind of like explains the PR pivot and how to leverage their PR once you do get it. Because once you get PR, you got to figure out how to leverage. So that's that's one of the main things. And Pam, can you just quickly say who, who like who is the ideal person for this particular service? Like black speakers. Mm -hmm. Black. Speakers. I mean, like where 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 are they at in there? So like, let's say, is it like, hey, I have an event coming up, um, and I want to you know get quick media call or hey i'm launching something or is it more right. so like hey i um i call them the messengers or the light bears people who actually have a message that they want to get out whether they're saying their message through their uh they're promoting or launching a a book an event they're launching a program but somewhere where they're launching their messengers and they and they want more people to know about the good that they're doing and that's always been what i've been about ministry marketing solutions, helping people who feel like they have a, a mission, a message, a ministry. So it's really helping them get out there. And that's really it. So, you know, yeah, I mean, can I work with dentists? Can I work with people who have food places? No, this is really more for people who have a message. Absolutely. So that's why we have the, the, we're the official magazine, the Black Speakers Network. It's really for, for those type of people, people who want to speak, coach, and train. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that want oh. to get the message out. And then we still have Ready, Set, Go. Ready, Set, Go was a bonus to the quick media coverage. Yes. Ooh. Man, I like this format. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is good stuff. And I, I and and Pam, you talk about something really important that is thinking about even what you were talking about, um, Dr. Monique. I think um listening to your audience and kind of building products and services to match, you know, okay. the need. And sometimes it's not always like, hey, this is specifically what people are asking for, but like taking the data and taking um, the kind of consumer behavior and saying, okay, here's what I think we could kind of give people, you know, highest level of uh, value 
but at something like that's pretty accessible. And then Pam, you know, obviously you, um, because I feel like anytime we're working with someone one-on-one, that should be kind of like the most premium thing, mm-hmm. but we have other things that are accessible to still get them like access. So I am so excited. I want to make sure everybody in BSN um, checks out uh, quick media coverage because I think, first of all, we're going to be using it, you know, just to kind of share and celebrate some of the things that we're working on um, throughout the course of the year. But I, I, I think for most speakers, to your point, this is something that um, they don't want to learn it, but nope. they can they just want it. Get access. <laughs> yes. They just want it. They just I want to I want to throw this word in. Um, it's still all done with integrity. That's yeah. that is one thing with Dr. Pam is you know she does want to teach you, um, but realizing you know uh, well, for whatever reason they just want it, but it's still done with integrity because there are a lot of PR opportunities out there that may not live up to what it's supposed to. So that's the thing that I, I think Pam that. Part of the pivot is you had to make sure to find that balance. Yes. What well, can I give them what they want with and still keep the integrity of not only who you are, but what PR really is all about. So, yeah. you know, it's all done with integrity, too. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. One of the things that Mark told me, he says, you're a PR purist. He says, he says, you need to get off of that and just really give people what they want. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he says, yeah. He says, just give them what they want, guarantee. And I was like, well, you can't really guarantee PR. But after a lot of months, there are certain outlets that I can guarantee. So that's where it really came from, from the trying to find the right mix. As Sierra was saying, trying to find the right mix of what can be guaranteed. And it's only because I, I have relationships with people. So they trust when I give them someone that it's going to be good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let's go to the next phase. I know we have a. Um, quite a few speakers uh, featured in this issue 2023 kicking off um yes, yes. but from the desk of the publisher one of my favorite parts um yes, <laughs> get a yes. chance to dive in so <laughs> wh- what was this about Pam? this one actually talked about the pivot about why i made the pivot and Got it. and how to really uh, leverage the pr once you do get the pr what pr is really about pr is not sales pr is really promotion and positioning and and packaging you to your audience. So I really kind of like explain that how to go from unknown, unnoticed, and ignored to really being seen everywhere. Not everywhere, like everywhere, but everywhere for your ideal client. Nice to see you. So that's really what that's about. Yeah. Nice. So I just, and I had to put a little QR code on there at the bottom if people want to go and sign up on that on the list there. So I have a whole new system that I'm running it I'm through. A, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm use trying it, to be all things. That's cool, cool, right. <laughs> that's good with technology. Right that's her strength. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we're supposed to be doing, though. Like, oh my God, Brian! It doesn't cost I, got, anything. I told you I got keep right. I got the Infusionsoft slash keep right. So that was a whole nother learning curve. I was like, "What am I trying to do?" And but look, yeah, like once good. you do it, it takes you to this like fun little like landing page that Pam has. So. Yes. So cute. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> like <gift> there. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Y'all use these. Bet, y'all better use these QR codes in 2023. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. And this young lady here is really a pilot, okay, and a speaker. And uh, she is a person, Shamala Willis. She's from Detroit. And uh, she has a fabulous story. She has such a heart for young women and young girls. Um, she's an educator. She is really, a, a, like I said, she's a pilot, okay? She's a pilot. Uh, she uh, helps Dr. Cindy Trim, who was our cover story last month, and she's uh, been with her for a long time. And that's how we actually met through Dr. Cindy Trim, but phenomenal lady. Uh, she has founded the International Community Builders, which is a nonprofit online that really helps, you know, educating um, and assisting building economic self-sufficiency. So it kind of fits in with the theme of the magazine and, she, and she's a delta and that was the uh, founders day i think was yesterday so you know oh, they yeah on, we, they, we, they we could 100. not yeah uh, we could not open up our our laptops and our computers without seeing some kind of red and white right it was like oh my god yeah so yeah she's she's part of that as well so this is crazy she, i i uh i think there's a uh surgence of um interest within the black community around aviation um, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, I, I feel mm-hmm. like I've seen a lot of people, um, learning how to fly and, yeah. um, I, I'm for it. I, I absolutely want to learn as well, but this okay. is really, this is really inc- incredible to see how, um, uh, speakers, creators, um, content creators are blending so many different disciplines. Um, cause she's like beauty expert, you know, she's writing. So this is really yes. cool. 
Yeah. yeah. You feel free to reach out to her and contact her. I could connect you to because she does a lot of private jets, um, things like that, too. So that's hey. where she makes her money. Yeah. Monet, put a note. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get it. Yeah. All right. Um, hey. Oh, there we go. How to stay focused. So we got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This. this is one of the things where I think most speakers fall off. They start out really good at the beginning of the year, and then they are then they're going chasing after the the shiny objects, right? So you are setting the foundation in this issue of how to stay focused as a professional speaker. So the five tips are really important um, for people to do. So definitely make sure that you all go and read this as well. Um, Brian is there. He yeah. has, um, you know. I like where this is with a global community of over 15,000 spread across 100 U.S. cities and 90 countries. Congratulations to Brian on that. That's a big feat. That was just an idea in your head. Remember about what, seven years ago? Yeah. As, as it's funny when you, uh, Dr. Monique, when you were talking about uh, your launch, like you were saying, like 2015, 2016, that was the same time, you know, BSN got started. So, yeah, it's uh, we got some a lot, a lot of uh, commonality. Um, in our, in our stories there. Love it. Love it. Staying focused. Staying <laughs> focused. Uh, Dr. Lugenia Rucker, she is a spiritual strategist. Again, a lot of the spirituality mm. talked about in this whole issue here where we're really um, pulling together not just the, the natural stuff, but also the spiritual stuff as well, empowering people to um, prosper on purpose. Again, part of the theme, if you kind of see a little theme going on here, that's what that's about, about prospering on purpose. Love it. Um, the center spread, though, is what I really, really love. <laughs> that's the top um, photo, Monet, if you go to the next page, is yeah. that hug. So you see Sister Namix right there, and you see, you see Dr. Monique, but you see the hug that she gives people, right? That's real. You know, that is that real. Is that's real. what she, wants everybody to feel that hug, to feel the love. So that's, um, that's been her mission. That's been her thing. That's what she does. Uh, if you're looking for someone who really can help you to that point of getting to the next level that cares, you know, care die, care, you know, it says, oh, okay, care, like care die. That's, that's part of your name, right? Care. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. You are brilliant. <laughs> That's so that's, good. That's, Look, and, and Pam not, will package you. Trust me. It's not normal Stay that along. everybody cares. Because some people right. out here that don't care. Yeah. But she has always cared. And 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 well, the whole Puerto Rico thing, you know, where she was going going through mud, going to people's houses. You could tell she cares, right? <laughs> so uh that that is it. So this I think that mm -hmm. I was gonna mention talking about overflow and the fact that she cares. I think that was the thing that um, when I had the opportunity to sit and interview with her, that really stuck out with me. And she, you mentioned that, you know, in Puerto Rico, the hustle isn't the same, right? Yeah. And when we talked and we talked about overflow, you said, yeah, money's important and it's good, but there's so many things people desire to have an overflow in. And it's almost like, you know, you gave that permission of validation it doesn't always have to be about the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? That's, and that's, that's the, a song right there, see it. That's right. a song, and, and that's baby. right in line with the care. And that's what stuck with me. Yes. You know? it, it, to, to that point, Sierra, and I'm glad you brought that up because we're in this culture, Dr. Brian, where everybody is like, you got to get to six figures and you got to get to seven figures and you got to hit eight figures. Eight figures. And, mm -hmm. and it's like, everybody is like, get to six figures in six days. And, and you know, I'm not <laughs> knocking any of that. Like, that is great. I've done programs like six figures in six months. I have done that in my past. I'll admit it. But I feel like we we are in a time right now. I don't, maybe this is just me, but I don't want for the culture to define what success in my money looks like exactly. for me. I want to define that for me. And I have had millions upon millions. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. We have had all of the trappings and all of the things. Did yeah, that you, make when you said I had a yacht? I was like, all right, well, we had, this is a different conversation. She just you know, like casually, like, yeah, we put all the stuff on our yacht and uh, went to St. Thomas. Right. All right. But she, but she still also is intact with her marriage, her man, you know, her man and her marriage and her son going to school, you know. That's it's what I'm saying. Yeah. And those are the things that matter because my husband had a very successful business. My husband's business reached a hundred million dollars. Okay. Have I ever bragged about those things? No. Why, Pam? Why would I do that? No, because don't be throwing up his 
throwing up his bank statements I mean, and I all just, that stuff on the Instagram. I like, think like, that the, the Louis Vuitton belt kind of speaks for itself. Like, uh, so I don't really think you need to now really be say self-conscious anything. about it, Brian. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you could have picked any belt. She's like, nah, here we go. Oh, man. But, but here's, the, here's the point. Here's the thing I want to make sure we everybody gets is that it's great to have all those things. But does it make you happy? No. What makes me happy is when I'm sludging through mud, making sure the lady has diapers for her baby mm -hmm. and making sure that she feels loved, that she doesn't feel forgotten, making sure I can hug a sister when she sees me at a speaking yeah. engagement and speak to, and look in her eyes and speak to her. And right. if six figures ain't your jam, it's OK. If seven figures is not your jam, it's OK. If you want an overflow of love, peace, joy and happiness in your relationship, that is wealth. That is mm -hmm. the inner millionaire that we're trying to connect to. So mm -hmm. I don't want us to believe that if we're not going after seven figures, then we're our, our, our message and our business doesn't matter. That's not true. We have to have the courage to 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 define what overflow is for ourselves. So see mm -hmm. thank you so much for just yeah. Having the the inner awareness to pinpoint that because I don't want that to I don't want people to miss that. So that, that is that. key and, and that is important, you know. And that's what I think a lot of people need to hear because, as you mentioned, when we went through the pandemic, we all had an opportunity to sit and think what was important to us, and that's why out of it came so many more entrepreneurs, and that's why they need you for the foundation. But also now that we've gone past the making the six figures in six days, what else is there? Come on you know, now. You know, and so um, I am excited. I, I cannot wait to connect with you personally and get involved in what you're doing. Thank you so much. And, and here's another thing. I, it's very important for me to say this for the sake of transparency and vulnerability. We have had all of those things, Dr. Brian. We have lost all of those things. I need to I need for y'all to know that my family and I went through a, 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 a crisis, a financial crisis that was of epic proportions. And in the midst of that, I had to tap into my overflow. I had to say, well, those things, they have come and they have gone. They flow in and out of your life. Mm -hmm. Do I still feel like an inner millionaire? You better believe I do. I still have a healthy, amazing son. My, my marriage, my husband is amazing. My family. I got to spend two weeks with my parents over the Christmas holidays. Mm -hmm. Come on now. That, my house was filled with family members. Come yeah. on now. I, don't, I, don't, I think I got maybe one gift or two, maybe. Do, but do I still feel blessed and abundant? And do I live in the midst of overflow every day? You better yeah. believe it. I don't, and that's not defined by my bank account. Yeah. I'm in a space, Brian and Pam, of rebuilding. Pam knows this. Mm -hmm. We are rebuilding, Sierra. I think mm -hmm. you and I talked a little bit about this. Mm -hmm. We're in a rebuilding season of our life. And, and guess running. what? And I'm okay with that because all of the things that I'm learning right now, it's all adding to my overflow. So, mm -hmm. And doing it, it with integrity, integrity always, which is, which is always like the main thing. If you don't have integrity, then it's like, what is it worth? Always. I, I was listening it. the other day of a, a podcast. It was Egypt um, and her husband, Mike, and they were interviewing Montel Jordan, who was in Atlanta mm -hmm. um, as well, mm -hmm. and his wife. And the podcast was amazing. And Montel just talked about how the first six years of his marriage, they asked him, it says, well, do you have anybody special in your life? And he, and he said, when he was just getting, got married, basically a couple of years, he says, yeah, I'm married to my music. And that was what the downfall, because he was mm. married to his wife, not his music. Mm. And so the first six years, he had a whole lot of stuff going on. And that's why Montel Jordan is now a minister. He wow. put his priorities in the right place. Everybody remember, this is how we do it. That that Montel Jordan, yeah, that guy. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, um, and, and he still will sing it, but he he's a minister now. He is I, a minister now. I anyway. heard an interview with um Mike Tyson. And I was like, I never thought I'd be quoting Mike Tyson. He, he always has that, um, you know, these List. these really interesting quotes. But they was like, man, you went to jail. Uh, he went to prison, you know, for for multiple years. And it mm -hmm. was like, you know, did you miss? You went from making thirty million dollars a fight to prison. He was like, you know, being in prison, you know, was actually the most peaceful years of his life. And wow. um, you know, yeah. a lot of people get a lot of money. And he was like, you know, sometimes God will give you exactly what you want to see, you know, if you can handle it. And um, <laughs> And he was like, you know, you can't put a price tag on peace, basically. Wow. Mm -hmm. Powerful stuff. Wow. 
Yes. That's amazing to be, have prison be the most peaceful time of your life. Oh my God. I mean, nobody was going to mess with him. I mean, that's what I know. That's, <laughs> you know, that's right. <laughs> well, I'm with you. I've heard a couple of his clips and he sounds like he has plenty of sense. You know, you know, just listening and hearing him speak the experiences. I, I think I saw that clip where he talked about the peace, but you, yeah. you just never know what a person is going through in life, yeah. you know, but um, he's grown. I, I say that I don't know what he was like before, but now that he's out of that, he's grown. He was a wild boy. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he uh, yeah, you know, maturity will do that and uh, wisdom. Um, yeah. Sometimes age comes alone, but you know, what you got, Pam? Uh, the next one, the next page, uh, oh, next page about moment. the courage. Uh, oh. The courage catalyst. This is Linda Fagan. She has a book coming out this year, but really, courage is really the key things that will um, help you bust through any fears and and things that you be anxious about, but she really helps people go through the courage. And then on the other page here, we have an article by uh, Z Scott talks about SEO, which PR and SEO are really, really close related. And just, I wanted her to explain to people why SEO is important, mm -hmm. search engine optimization. Uh, she calls herself the, uh, the SEO queen and she really knows her stuff in that. And she's also a violinist. So if you look up Z Scott, she, she has got nice. Some, yeah, she has she's gonna be doing a concert. Right. And she plays some I'm about to like go like I'm about to like, I'm about to go like do some recital lessons or something. Like this is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and I don't have enough concert. skills. Yes, yes. So she is Google Google Z and uh she's she's got a lot going on, but basically you want Having a pretty website is important, but getting traffic is really the key. That's it. And so that has to do with SEO. So if you're looking for an African American to do SEO, I would recommend uh, Z to really help you with that, or at least consult with her a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna contact her about uh, doing a speaker development class on that because we don't really talk about SEO as much as we should. Yeah, we should. It's it's a lot to it. It's a lot to it. The next page I really really like her last name kind of. Um, lemon and you know the, the whole saying of like you can make uh lemonade out of lemons well she had a lot of things going on in her life mandy lemon and now she's really turning her mess into her message but just the first line of this uh bio she was raped and left for dead by her own father Ooh. so her life was really a mess but she has turned it around and she's helping other people to to live through and thrive after trauma so that's one of the main things with her as well. She's been featured on uh, NBC's Access Hollywood for sharing her mantra of turning your your mess into your message. So it's, you, you know, her information is down there as well. And, and she's Another, a new uh, member of uh, Black Speakers Network. She just joined in uh, in uh, November. So. Oh, good, good. Okay. All right. All right. So Mandy, yes, it's, it's a amazing story. I think her video is on there too. If we pop over, I think yep. it is. Yeah, it is. It's in there. Uh huh. And then uh, Diane Jennings, she's in Atlanta. Dr. Monique, <laughs> she's in Atlanta. She's a woman of influence, has been 40 years in the mortgage real estate business. Um, she's also a minister, ordained minister. So definitely I would suggest, uh, Dr. Monique, that you reach out to her and connect with her. Love her, love her. She has a podcast um, called Kitchen Table uh conversation so you know right there you got kitchens going on right there you know so, you, know, you, <laughs> you two need to connect but she's really really a, a person that talks a lot about business of uh, equity and inclusion and really a lot about financial things as well so she's awesome. she's down there in atlanta as well and then the wow. next person is a minister as well she's she's really talking about where ministry and marketplace marry so Dr. Um, her name is also Dr. Monique uh, Flemings, and uh, she was in the issue a couple of issues back. And so she's back again because she has a new program that she's starting as well. But yes, yeah, so she is um, really, really uh, a person that fits, I guess you say, that bookends this whole issue, because a lot of the women um, in this issue have a heart for women in ministry and also mm -hmm. for finances. So the two it was, it was all women. I think in the yeah. issue, right? Yeah. 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 All women's surprise. Your article. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I, meant the I meant the feature, but yeah, yeah. 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 That, that's incredible. Systemics, you know, that's what we're talking about. Hey. I, I, I got it. <laughs> I, I'm on board now. I'm with it. <laughs> so, and then the last one, really for other people, if they want to step in the spotlight, you know, people are always like lurking and looking, just step on in, get to the link, you know, step yeah, on in, get in the magazine. 
um, when you're on the, you're in the magazine, but you're also on the website and definitely you can use it for your SEO. You can share mm -hmm. the page out. You can embed your video. If you have a speaker reel for your speaker reel views to go up because so many speaker reels and people don't have a lot of views on their speaker reels. It's like, you need to share this thing around. So that's one of the mm -hmm. things we put it, we embed it. And then we also put it on the website as well. And then we also have a podcast that goes where podcasts go. Nice. Uh, we did the podcast the other day with Monique. That was really, really fun with uh, Simone. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. I, I feel like Pam, you should be, uh, um, What's her name? Z Scott. Um, Z Scott. Y'all, y'all should be doing some program together because, like the um the Speakers Magazine opportunity, you you and your team do such a an incredible job, and you're so intentional with making sure that um you're expanding the digital footprint um mm -hmm. for all the speakers that are involved, and even just what you said, like um because you're right, like I, I do see a lot of um speaker reels and just really good content and it's like you know five views six views yeah. or whatever and it's not like it's all about views but i think at the end of the day you, like, you should it. always be looking for ways to organically extend your reach uh exactly. into new audiences and you provide that um I, I think being in the magazine of course is incredible having being having a print version like i still you know show mine but the the digital um the the digital boost that it provides is incredible and mm -hmm. so um the Monet, discoverability would, yeah. yeah the mm -hmm. discoverability yep, yep that's that's great. It. That's so it. let's make sure we put that link up there for people that want to um get into the next issue of speakers um uh, magazine and then that way um you all can uh get featured too yeah and so this right here is nikichi taifa she's in the dmv uh she actually went to howard and she is a um black lawyer black power she is one of the leaders in the reparations movement and so that's all i'm going to say about that so i could you know you know see her so i can keep myself quiet right <laughs> i'm keeping myself quiet too but i had the pleasure the honor to interview her as well i love my job i love it yeah. <laughs> are we getting reparations that's what's happening i think no, I, I, reparations I, is, is really happening in, in a few cities chicago well a suburb of chicago had reparations um dr monique Mm -hmm. Through their the mm -hmm. housing, for African American, you got different um, reparations based on certain things. But anyway, but people are really looking at reparations seriously. I mean, every other nationality got it except for African Americans. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. we could start with uh, that for about forty I, I, years. I would be fine if they line. just did like free education and healthcare, and then we could like call it even. Start there. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? We'll we'll be able to have a full conversation next month with, oh, she did, with is her. Is she going to be on the cover? Yeah, isn't that what Pam said? <laughs> no, I, I said, didn't. I, I said, said let me be quiet before say. I say too much, and then yeah. she just said. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. Like, I, no, I'm not, maybe, well, I maybe know. not. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Thank you, Monique. Maybe, same, maybe same not. Speaker time, same speaker channel, y'all. Exactly. Just come back next month and find out. How about that? <laughs> there you go. Oh my well, God. this is good, Doctor Monique. Uh, I know we're a little over time. Uh, do you have any final thoughts as we wrap up uh, this conversation? Again, congratulations. Um, super excited to uh, just have this conversation with you. Your deep dive. Uh, as always, Sierra, again, great job with um, the cover. And Pam continues to crank out excellence yes, <laughs> yeah. uh, five years in the making. But any final thoughts as we kind of bring this conversation to a close? First of all, thank you. It's, it's it's a pleasure to meet you, Dr. Brian. I'm I'm glad that we're connected in this way now, and looking forward to con, you know exploring how we can continue this relationship and this connection. Um, I guess if I had to leave with some final thoughts, they would be that this is the year of uh, clarity and overflow. Uh, this is a year that I, I've chosen two words for myself personally. My two words for the year are surrender and declare. Mm. And I just to hone in on that word, declare for a second, because surrender means a lot of things to me. But to declare your overflow, to declare your success, whatever mm -hmm. that means for you, we have to start using the power of our mouths and our own personal inner self-talk to go in the direction that we want our lives to go, to move in the direction, to impact the people, to do the things, to serve in the way that we want to serve, to mold and shape our life the way we want to. And to create that overflow starts with the words that come from your mouth. Every word that you speak is a seed being planted. Mm. So speak the right words over your life. 
it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. I'm so blessed by today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless your overflow. <laughs> <laughs> not me, not me just seeing that you had a shirt that says overflow on um the entire interview. <laughs> yes. Gotta That's wrap my brand, cool. gotta wrap my set. All right. Well, doc, I we appreciate that so much. And yes, we will definitely stay in touch, stay connected. Uh the BSN community is here uh, for you as well as a, a ongoing resource. Uh Dr. Pam, closing thoughts. Just um speakersmagazine.com. You know, go there and uh, download the issue, read the issue, go to overflownow.com. You'll see it in the in the actual article. And check out the new website Dr. Monique has there, overflownow.com. Yes. Really, really good. Really Thank good. You. Thank you for All this right. opportunity. Thank see you. Ya. All I want to say is that um, stay connected with Black Speakers Network. Stay connected with Speakers Magazines as well as Dr. Um, Pam Perry. Come back every month to watch and see who is being featured because what the goal is to continue to build community, community and strengthen it so that we can continue growing. So mm -hmm. thank you to Dr. Pam, Dr. Brian, and you too, Dr. Monique. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. And my final thought is uh, the only thing that separates um, entertainment from inspiration and education is action. So um, if you are watching this and you're like, oh, I would love to be, you know, speakers magazine i would love to you know take act and even it's the things that we're talking about today um you know you're like oh i think i want to get a copy of dr monique's book just go get it now yeah. <laughs> like, don't procrastinate just because by by in 10 minutes from now you forgot everything that you kind of mentally made a commitment to whatever it is if you can't do it now put a calendar invite in go to the website now if you want to get in speakers magazine do it you know, start the process. Don't let this be the year of procrastination. Let it be the year Ooh, that's of overflow. A word right there. Um, Stay focused. Like you said, love it. Love Let's it. get it. All right. We are out. I uh, have an amazing rest of the day, everyone. BSN, we appreciate you. And as we always say, keep speaking up because your audience awaits and we will see you on stage. Have a great day. Thank you. Uh -huh. Cool.